Michigan Football Post Game Show. I'm your host, James Yoder, coming to you from Casa de Yoder. Had a little block party tonight, so I was watching the entire game from my phone, from inside behind me, in here, late night, Dallas, Texas. That's around 10, 15 p.m. doing our post game show. Michigan wins 29 to 7. So um, let you guys start off in the comments. One word reaction to tonight's 29 to 7 win. Look, Michigan State was competitive early, like I've said all week, and I do think the game plan was to try and limit the rushing attack as much as you can from Michigan while also taking some shots um, downfield. I mean, Keon Coleman, they went forward on fourth down twice in the first half. Michigan State did. Coleman had a touchdown. He had another um, catch, both on Jimon Green. So I'll say uh, it was a mediocre win, but a dominant one. So I don't want to say mediocre. That's not fair to this team. Um I'll look what you guys say if you give me some ideas. I'm not sure what a one-word reaction is for me. Uh, it's satisfying but not excellent. What was this win today? So let's dive a little, a little bit deeper. Um, the biggest concerns I'm having here for Michigan going forward are the passing game in general and the play calling in the red zone. Um, much like Ohio State today, Michigan had so many plays inside the red zone, so many first down attempts inside the 15, inside the 10, inside the 8 – where all of a sudden it's third and four from, you know, third and goal from the four or third and goal from the six, third and goal from the three, and they just can't convert. And think about really early on, at least for what the first three quarters or so, two and a half quarters, the only touchdown they scored was kind of on a trick play, right? Blake Corum going out and coming in motion and getting a little shovel pass from J.J. McCarthy, which technically counts as a receiving touchdown. Um, so Corum, a receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown tonight. But you know, that's really got to change because I just don't think this is the same team as last year where Hassan Haskins and maybe a, a little bit more physical offensive line last year versus maybe more talented this year um, gets the job done. So I am a bit concerned with the play calling uh, in the red zone. It's going to be very clear about that. The overall passing game. Let's talk about that for one second. I'm not trying to be negative in any regards, but JJ 15 of 25. So, you know, 60% uh, re, uh, passing today, 167 and a touchdown on a shovel pass. But where do those yards come from? They usually came underneath passes for the most part, outside of, I think, two plays. And they mostly came to tight ends and backs even potentially. So, um, Outside of you know, Luke Schoonmaker, five catches for 70 yards. Ronnie Bell, four for 53. But then Cornelius Johnson, one catch. Roman Wilson, one catch for negative three yards. Johnson, seven yards. Diamond Edwards, three of 38. Uh, Blake Horn, one for two. So you had six guys catch a pass. Three receivers. But one of those receivers had negative yards in Roman Wilson. Nothing for Andrew Anthony. Uh, certainly nothing for A.J. Henning. So passing game in general, I think, is a big-time problem that Michigan must resolve. Now, um, talk about some positives. The defense was pretty much amazing. Uh, they gave up a few plays early on. Michigan State did their best to call creative plays, to go for it on fourth down, to take deep shots, which they caught a couple of them, um, including a touchdown on Jamon Green. But I thought that um, uh, Keon Coleman was pretty impressive for them. He ended up with, what, five catches for 155 and a touchdown. But other than him... Their offense really struggled all night. Um, four catches for Jalen Reed for 17 yards. Barker with two for 15. And that was basically it, right? Uh, two for eight, two for eight with a couple other guys. Um, the rushing attack. Jalen Berger, nine carries for 17 yards for Michigan State. And so overall, Peyton Thorne, 17 of 30 for 215. A touchdown and interception. Uh, was it Rod Moore at the end? I think I'd gotten that. I was just getting ready. Yeah, Rod Moore, one interception, returned it for 34 yards. Um, so... Just recapping there, overall pretty impressed with the defense, less than impressed with the offense. Michigan, as you see behind me, I think this is uh, just starting to, I paused it, but nevertheless, keep going. So I hope we don't get copyright for that. Uh, you know, do one of these, little uh, Paul Bunyan uh, pose for Michigan. So a uh, little bit different show today, so I appreciate everyone watching, just taking my off-the-cuff thoughts. I have no script, I have no agenda here, and I didn't go down to the studio because of some family obligations. Michigan gets the win, 29-7. Um, one more thing to discuss here. Uh, Michigan, 443 yards 
to 252 for Michigan State, 215 of those passing. So uh, Michigan State only 37 yards on the ground, Michigan 276. Look, if Michigan can do what they've done with Blake Corum, who's the other you know surprise or you know, impressive part of this game, um, 33 carries, 177, one touchdown rushing, one touchdown passing. If they can get this kind of performance out of him, out of the running game, Diamond Edwards as well, 10 for 42, JJ 7 for 50, they can beat Ohio State. But you're not going to do it, I don't think, like last year, where you get six touchdowns in the red zone on the ground. AJ Henning with one, and then Hassan Haskins five from there. I don't think that's going to happen this year. You have got to find a passing game in the red zone or kind of overall outside of when you guys you just have guys streaking across the middle of the field on the outside and being completely wide open all right make sure you subscribe to the channel give me your instant reactions give me your reactions to the show my takeaways right off the cuff after admittedly a few drinks out there all day in the block party so um thanks for bearing with me just rambling off on this mission game Michigan wins 29-7. to See you guys tomorrow. I'll be a little more coherent and a more prepared overreaction Sunday. Subscribe. Go Blue.